Bombay, October 2039. If I get out of here alive, I'm never going to allow myself to feel so helpless again. I shuffle through the mud, head bowed against the hot sea wind. Something half buried in the mud glitters, and when I stop, a shout sends me sprawling on the ground. Flinging out an arm to shield myself against the inevitable next blow, I spring back up, my hand now clutching a baby's shoe. A blood-stained shoe. A shiver runs down my spine. No one is safe here. No one. The tiny shoe falls from my nerveless fingers. Go on, the soldier prods me with his gun. Won't do to keep the general waiting. Reaching the open jeep, he thrusts, he thrusts me inside onto the floor. I curse aloud and straighten just in time to see him snap a salute at another vehicle. A Humvee passes us, heading for the jungle, the refugee camp that's been my home for the past few months. No doubt, the driver is some high-ranking official amongst the guardians, part of the council that runs Bombay City. He's on his way to hurt someone, even kill, or perhaps wreck the temporary huts we call home. Anything to rid us of hope, to make us leave. But where do we go? Back to our country? where we'd as likely be hunted down and killed? Back to the homes which were burnt down by the soldiers who had taken over New London? Trapped. You're trapped here. Anger twists my gut. I can't let myself be taken. Not like this. Not without a fight. Without giving myself time to think, I leap at the guy still standing to attention outside the jeep, taking him down. Pulling the gun from his side, I'm back on my feet and pointing the weapon at him before he has time to breathe. His eyes widen as I take aim. I'm about to squeeze the trigger when something slams into me from behind. Red-violet sparks explode behind my eyes and I crash to the ground. Pain slashes up my arms as my wrists are pulled behind me and shackled. My legs tied together before I'm thrown back into the jeep. My head slams against the hard floor, sending another wave of light crashing through my head. Trying to recover, I shift. I slide onto my back when a coin rolls out of my pocket. It rattles across the floor, dancing around once, twice, thrice in a circle, before coming to rest between the shoes of my captor. The soldier picks it up, rubs his finger over, the, over its shiny surface, and it's as if he's touched that part of me which I've hidden for so long, hidden from my shipmates on the month-long voyage to this country, hidden from those who had killed my father, who had raped my mother after she had offered herself up in my place right in front of me and Lily. And all through it, I had hung on to this coin stolen from my father's wallet. I'd gripped it and prayed to whoever was out there to save us. But of course, no one had come. Only the coin had stayed with me, solid. A reminder of all that was normal and sane in a world gone mad. A world crumbling around me. It's mine, I growl clamping down on the surge of frustration that twists my gut, knowing even if I, as I say it that I should have simply saved my breath, not baited him further, but I have to say something. The coin is the only sign left of my parents, of where I come from, of London, once a city filled with flowers and trees so high they soared up towards the faint sunshine that filtered down through the clouds. Ancient trees, trees as old as the city I am in now. And yet, Bombay is also new, reinventing itself, marching into a new world, and I am trying to find my place in it. The soldier doesn't even hear me, simply pockets my coin. Anger pulses through me. I swear aloud. I want to scream at him, ask him to give it back, tell him that he cannot just take what is not his, that it's impolite to do so. And that brings me up short. I should have left civilities behind a long time ago. Desperation can turn humans into animals, bring out the beast in them. And when you lose the roof over your head, you take what you find to shield yourself. That much I have learned in my race to find refuge in this new world. And yet, a part of me still hopes, yearns for things to go back to what they were. Simple, civilized, safe. But they won't. And for now, I have more pressing things to worry about, like figuring out where they are taking me. When the vehicle leaps forward, my stomach twists with fear. Bile rushes to my throat, heart thudding against my rubs. I burst out. Where are you taking me? No answer. Then one of them replies, 
to introduce you to your future, of course, at which I just react. Managing to get to my knees, I launch myself at the soldiers. Headbutting one, I bite the other on his arm. The sourness of his skin mixed with the coppery taste of blood fills my mouth. He screams, a shrill high-pitched cry, before his partner drags me off him and slams me against the wall. I hit my head and everything goes dark. That's the first chapter. Thank you.